Hello, so today I'm going to do a quick demonstration of live looping using MIDI clips in Ableton Live 9, some new features, and Max for Live, like a custom Max for Live patch that I've created. You can see that here in blue in the bottom left. So historically, this workflow kind of came to me from working with an Alesis Micron, a hardware synthesizer, and you could do live looping on it, and all the live looping was MIDI-based. And that kind of led me to certain performance effects that I really liked and ways that I would make songs that I really enjoyed doing. Um, a big advantage was also variation that you can apply to loops once they're recorded. So for example, if you have a bass sound, if that was looping, then you could apply some maybe some pitch bend. Okay, other things, more interesting, also some modulation. And then, of course, another good one is arpeggiator. And then maybe the attack of the sound or the release of the sound. So you can, I found that being able to really control the synthesis engine uh, via MIDI and to affect the loops, like the notes that had already been recorded, that was um, a really a really creative way of working and allowed me to have a lot of variation in uh, my live looping setup. So I'll have a quick I'll have a quick demonstration here of kind of how the technical side is working. I can choose three different sounds. This is scalable to more sounds. So I have um, drums here. The drums are actually repeated every octave. Um, because when I'm playing a keyboard part up here, <coughs> I don't want to switch to the drums and then not be able to find my kick drum. So now I know that they're always there. I also like playing the drums on the pads, but for this demo, they're on the keys. So, yeah, drums, clavinet sound, which goes through a wah pedal, an external wah pedal. Aftertouch has a modulation, vibrato sound, also here. Amplitude modulation here. And arpeggiator there. And then we also have a bass sound. Um, pitch bend, etc. Good. Um, the idea as well, like the way of working that I had was that basically you record a loop live and then you can store it into a like a preset patch so you can always record that loop. So maybe you can have like just the drums, just as hi-hat, record that as a loop, duplicate that loop put in a kick and a snare, and then you can save it as a second loop, and then you can switch between them. And that works for the drums, the keys, and the bass part. So yeah, I'll do a quick demo now and kind of walk through the steps and how to use the software and how to set everything up. So if we look at each track, each track has the MIDI clip looper. And you can choose the different sounds using this arm button here. And you can see it just changes the arm, whatever track is armed. After that, you can see here in the kind of loop preset section, you can store each loop. So when you've got a loop that you like, you can store it in one of these preset boxes. And again, I've got the drums, like the store button for drums here, store button for keys here, and store button for bass here. So I can press this, 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 and it will store it into the first loop. And then when I've hit it again, it will store it in the second loop. This row here can trigger the first loop, and this here can trigger the second, the second stored loop, and this the third. At the moment, I've got it set up quite limited, but of course, it's all expandable up to eight kind of preset slots. What else? Okay, so I'm going to start a track with some drums, and I'm going to record the drums without a click and unquantized. So you can see the clip quantization is also off. Okay, so I'm going to record in the drums. Okay, so we store this as preset one. And if you look at the clip, we can see 
it's longer than two bars and this will mean it will go out of sync with other <coughs> recorded clips. So we're going to use the scale button and if you watch the clip now it jumps to two bars in length and then if we just re-trigger the clip and then we know everything is in sync. I'm going to iron that out a little bit so it's a bit more streamlined so then it's not so complicated and it, there's no audio drop out at the moment, still working on that part. So we have our beat, kind of a basic beat. Now we can duplicate this clip and we can put in another part. And then we'll store that uh, in like preset two. So store. And now we can switch between them. Okay, now put in a second sound. Okay, maybe I'm not so happy with that, so if I press the new button, I can record it again. It's a bit like the undo. Okay, so record again. Okay, that's good. We've got the wah pedal, remember? So that's what the kind of filter is. Okay, then let's store that. So that's in preset one for the keyboard. And put in a bass part. And we'll store the bass part. Okay, now maybe we jump to the keyboard, put in another keyboard part. Okay, now record. Store that as a second keyboard part. Now, you turn up some effect or something. And then you can jump back to the original. So it's really nice that you can jump back to previous loops that you've recorded. Um, now the trick is if you have two sounds selected, you can use the new button to jump out of the loop, play something, and then jump back in. I'll show you. Like that. Yeah, and then that's it. Like I can keep can build another drum part maybe if I want. Okay, so record. Store that as three. And then you can kind of mix and match what you've recorded. And that's it really. And then of course, as I said, because it's MIDI, you can still play around with it. It's like a pipe arpeggiator on and off. So you can get some bass variation in there. Okay, so that was just a kind of small demo. Oops, delay there. At the moment, it's just kind of a, a toolkit to allow me to experiment a bit more with a workflow for live looping with MIDI clips. There's still some bugs to iron out, but yeah. If there is anything that you notice or any feature requests, let me know. Okay, thanks.